It's time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. A presentation of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company, maker of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world-honored Longines. Good evening, this is Frank Knight. May I introduce our co-editors for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope? Larry Lasseur and Francis W. Carpenter, United Nations correspondent for the Associated Press. Our distinguished guest for this evening is General Carlos P. Romulo, special envoy from the Philippine President to the United States. One great conference is underway in Asia. Another is scheduled. The first attended by the United States is to protect Southeast Asia from communism. The second to be attended by 30 Asian African nations is to protect Asia against colonialism. Our famous guest tonight represents a country which will be attended by both. General Romulo, do you think what is being done in Bangkok now can save Southeast Asia from communism? I think so. I think what is being done in Bangkok now is to implement the Manila Treaty and the Pacific Charter, two important documents that were approved in Manila last September. The Manila Treaty is significant in the sense that for the first time, infiltration and subversion are considered as overt aggression. The Pacific Charter is transcendental in importance in so far as Asia is concerned, because for the first time, colonial powers committed themselves to uphold and defend the principle of self-determination and independence for all the peoples of Asia. Well, General, some of the neutrals in Asia refused to uh, uh, take part in the Manila Pact and in this conference in Bangkok. Is there anything being done in Bangkok that could appeal to them to bring them in in any way? I hope that the same unsentimental sense of danger that joined Pakistan, Thailand, and the Philippines would sooner or later draw them to a conference or to a grouping such as was formed in Manila and now meeting in Bangkok. Well, General Romano, just what are they trying to achieve at Bangkok, the eight nations which are attending that conference? When I said they are trying to implement the Manila Treaty, they are organizing now the Council of Ministers that is to meet periodically. They are also going to organize a secretariat for that organization and also a group of military advisors that will meet from time to time to study and to report to the minister's council their studies on infiltration and subversion and how to defend these countries against infiltration and subversion. Well, are they going any further than a study of how to defend it? Are we going to defend it? Well, the Philippines and Thailand would like to see more teeth put into this treaty. Whether they will succeed or not in Bangkok, I do not know. By teeth, you mean soldiers? You mean commitments of force? Well, I understand the Secretary of Foreign Affairs of the Philippines wants an air force of the eight nations, mm -hmm. something like that. Well, would you like to see a, a treaty formation in the Bangkok that would resemble the NATO defenses for Europe? Well, it would In seem other words, with American military commitments there? There is no such military commitment on the part of the United States. But uh, the Philippines and Thailand and I think Pakistan as well as Australia and New Zealand would like to see something more concrete done along the line of troops in Southeast Asia. As I said, whether they will succeed or not, that's hard to tell. Well, General Romulo, how can nations be defended against subversion if they don't defend themselves? Well, that is precisely what they are trying to discuss now in the conference because the Philippines succeeded in doing that. The Philippines succeeded in uh, protecting itself against infiltration and subversion when it broke the back of communist rebellion there. Has that been cleaned up? Yes, practically. It was done by President Magsaysay mm. when he reorganized the army got it out of politics, and then forged it into a fighting machine. And then, aside from the use of force, 
he saw that the basic problem of communism in a Asia is really the land problem. So he opened up vast tracts of public land in Mindanao. Well, General Romulo, in April, the 30 Asian African nations will hold their conference. Now, what will they be watching? What will they be looking for that may take place at Bangkok? Well, they will be looking for concrete achievements of the Bangkok conference. Hmm. They'll be looking for uh, what the Bangkok conference can do to protect those countries, signatories to the Manila Treaty against subversion and infiltration. If the Bangkok conference in doing something that is really substantial, well, that will be a lesson for the Asian conference in Bandung. Uh, General, there is some speculation somewhere as to whether uh, Mao Zedong and Chu Wen Lai really want to start an invasion of Formosa. Uh, what is your view on that? This is a military man and diplomat. What do you think of it? Well, my, uh, my view on that question is that I feel that Ch Red China started with a military maneuver what she really wanted to achieve diplomatically. Hmm. I mean to say, they rattled the sword in Kemoy and all these offshore islands to compel us to negotiate. Well, we did. And in negotiating, what happened? We, they succeeded in bringing up Formosa to the United Nations, which heretofore we've always refused. General Romulo, the United States will not attend this conference of the Asian and African nations to be held in Indonesia next month, or rather in April. Tell me, why is your country attending a conference which, in which Red China and other Russian satellites will be present? Because uh, this is a conference of Asian nations. The Philippines is in Asia and is, is of Asia. If we do not attend that conference, we'll be outcasts or pariahs in Asia. But more important than that, we are attending that conference because that is precisely the place where we should state our points of view forthrightly and vigorously and tell them what we think, express the views of our people there. That is not a conference for us to run away from. That is the conference where we should be in and state our views clearly. Well, won't Red China be the dominant voice at such a conference? I don't know. But uh, we will also be a voice there. Well, <coughs> will you have some competition from Mr. Nehru, who will probably have a leading point in that conference? They may have the dominant voices, but certainly uh, our voice should also be heard precisely. That's why we should be there, to listen to them and to make them listen to us, too. Mm. Well, General Romulo, out of this conference of the 30 Asian African nations, do you think there's a possibility that a uh, groupment will arise which might enable this coalition to become a third force between communism and the West? An attempt may be made to do that. But all those attending it who are of goodwill, who believe in peace, who believe in freedom, will try very hard to see to it that this conference should not be transformed into an alignment of the East against the West or of the West against the East, but that it should be a conference that will have an eye single to the promotion of peace and goodwill among men. Well, many of the nations which will attend that conference have, uh, have in the past been dominated by white man's colonialism. Now, how much of the conference will be aimed at protecting the groupment of those nations now against uh, further imperialism? Well, that is where I think the Manila Conference has stolen a march on this Asian conference because in the Manila Conference proposed by President Magsaysay of the Philippines, the Pacific Charter was approved. And that Pacific Charter is really the Asian equivalent of the Atlantic Charter. And it protects the peoples of Asia against colonialism. Tell me, uh, General Romilio, do you think Asia is impressed by the brutality and the lack of freedom which is inherent in communism? Or are they impressed with the way that former backward countries like Russia and a backward country like China has won great military victories? In Asia, propaganda, and this is important, is not achieved by television or radio or newspapers as propaganda is carried out here. Propaganda in Asia is by massive action, by something spectacular. 
When the Pacific Charter was approved, for example, that is something that catches Asian popular imagination, and that is important. Military victories, yes. But more important than military victories is that which affects the freedom of the peoples of Asia and the Pacific Charter. Well, done that. General, may I ask you as a final question? I think we have time. What can we do to impress the Asian people with our policy of non-aggression? That's not a very positive policy, it's a negative policy. And you were telling me just now about how spectacular action impressed the Asians. How can a policy of non-aggression impress them? Well, America can impress Asia by seeing to it that the pattern that she set in the Philippines is followed by her allies all over the world. It is important for America to remember that her greatness lies in her traditions, in her being a libertarian country. And she being a child of the revolution, America must cease the revolutionary initiative in Asia. And thus, can she win the friends that she needs in Asia and convince the world of her earnestness and her sincerity. Thank you very much, General Ramido. Very glad to have you up here tonight. Thank you. The opinions expressed on the Longines Chronoscope were those of the speakers. The editorial board for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope was Larry Lesseur and Francis W. Carpenter. Our distinguished guest was General Carlos Pri Romilo, special envoy from the Philippine President to the United States. If ever you buy an automatic, that is, a self-winding watch, please bear in mind that an automatic is even more complicated than a hand-wound watch. And for that reason, it'll pay you to make sure that the automatic watch you buy bears the name Longines, for Longines makes the world's most advanced automatic watches. Now here are the facts. An automatic watch is wound by a tiny pendulum called a rotor, which swings back and forth with the motions of your wrist. Now, this diagram represents the winding rotor of an ordinary automatic. See how it moves only in half a circle. And this diagram represents the Longines automatic. Every Longines automatic watch contains the 360 degree full swing winding rotor, a development pioneered by Longines engineers. Full swing motion means highest winding efficiency without winding shock. Now the Longines rotor moves freely in a full circle in either direction. Every movement provides winding action. More important, however, is the micro precision of Longines manufacture and the precious hand finishing given to essential parts. This is a basic reason for the unparalleled accuracy of all Longines watches, including Longines automatics. Longines watches for ladies and gentlemen are made in a variety of styles, in stainless steel, gold-filled, and 14-karat gold cases. So if you pay $71.50 or more for a watch, for your own protection, insist on a Longines, the world's most honored watch, the world's most honored gift, premier product of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company, since 1866, maker of watches of the highest character. We invite you to join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday evening at this same time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, broadcast on behalf of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world's honored Longines. This is Frank Knight, reminding you that Longines and Whitnor watches are sold and serviced from coast to coast by more than 4,000 leading jewelers who proudly display this emblem, Agency for Longines Whitnor Watches.